four hours of the best show ever. You heard him on the Eagles Insider Show. And, of course, you can check out his work on InsideTheBirds.com. Andrew DiCecco joins us. Andrew, I'm going to miss you on Thursdays I'm not ready to say goodbye. I'm going to miss you. <laughs> I guess we're, yeah, so we're moving to the day before the game and then the day after the game. So oh, 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 yes, that's right. Thank you for telling oh. the audience. So, Andrew DiCecco <laughs> We'll be moving from Thursdays at 8.10. He's going to join us every Friday in studio for an hour, the 8 o'clock hour beginning tomorrow, and then the day after a game. So typically, He'll check in. Typically Mondays. We'll do the, the check-in. Right. There's one Thursday game this year, so we'll have Andrew on that Friday morning. But, dude, we're very excited to be working with you all season long. This What excites me is I get to talk to you twice a week. Well, actually, three times counting a pregame show. But now... Uh, on Kincaid and South Judas, we'll hear from you twice a week. We're excited for it, man. So am I. Really, it's always fun working with you guys, and we're going to have a lot to get into this season, so I can't wait. And so I don't want to focus too heavily Eagles-Packers because we'll do that tomorrow with you when you're with us for the hour. Uh, but something that we're doing today. First, I want to ask our main topic for you, and then we'll, we'll start talking about some future stuff with the, around the NFL and the division winners. I wonder if the Eagles are being disrespected nationally. Now, you look at it from a much different point of view than John and I do, and you're there at the locker rooms. You're, you're there at NovaCare every single day. The, the, the word on the street is that the Eagles could win the division or they could straight up miss the playoffs. Like, it's, it's a tale of two stories at this point. Like we, got, we got potential Super Bowl appearances and potentially missing the playoffs. For those who say the Eagles are going to miss the playoffs or not win the division – are they getting disrespected in those regards? I think the Eagles totally are, especially from a national standpoint. I think, you know, locally you have a much better pulse on the team, Andrew, and you see the growth from the spring through the summer and you know exactly where they're, where they're strongest, you know where the areas of opportunity are. So for me, when you look at this roster, there's not a lot to complain about or a lot to have any trepidation about offensively. There's concerns elsewhere, but offensively I think they're really strong. There's no reason why they shouldn't be able to, to roll up 28 points a game if, every, if everyone stays healthy and things are firing on all cylinders. Now, defensively, sure, I can understand why they might while there might be some concerns there, but I think that there's so many young pieces there that are moldable and you have a veteran coach. That gives you a baseline level of production that, at least for me, I have a lot more comfort. My comfort level with the defense is a lot more than maybe some. Yeah, there are going to be growing pains, especially defensively. But I think when you have players like a Jalen Carter and you have a Quinion Mitchell and a, a couple of, of veterans you can still hang your hat on and see Dick Gardner-Johnson and, and Slay, I think that, that should ease some concern. Can you give me an idea of a player whose opinion you changed your mind on from maybe what you thought in the offseason now that training camp and all the preseason's over? And it could be a positive or a negative. I'll give you two. Jordan Davis. On because one, he showed up in, in, in peak condition, and this is not the, the this is not where we question Jordan Davis. It's later in the season, but I think right now, just hearing the that he's well aware of the onus that falls on him and Jalen Carter and being the centerpieces of the defense, that's not lost on him. Fletcher Cox is not here. A lot more is going to be expected of him, and you're seeing a lot more first. You're seeing him be able to pursue and chase the quarterbacks, and I'm just seeing a lot more of a, a maturation in him. I won't sit with the other player, John, because a lot of my points in the Kobe Dean, but I've been a big a staunch supporter of the Kobe Dean. But uh, no one's this a player that I've gotten a ton of questions about in terms of just his overall effectiveness. Is he going to be the player that can take that leap? We'll, not, we'll, we'll find out soon. But everything that I've seen, you see the, the, the traits, you see the, the strength. He added a lot of uh, muscle to his brain, which he needed. And, and you're seeing a player who I think is primed to, to take that next step. Now, what does that mean? The eight sacks would be acceptable, I would think, so from a player who only played 16% of the snaps. But he's a player that caught my attention as well. We're speaking to Andrew to check on the Comcast Business Hotline. Now, you mentioned the Kobe Dean beat out Devin White for that middle linebacker spot in training camp. And, of course, Devin White will not be playing tomorrow night because of the ankle injury. So let me ask you this. Did Nicobe Dean beat out Devin White because Nicobe Dean is taking a step forward, or were the concerns that Devin White was losing a step valid? Great question. So the first two weeks of training camp, Nicobe had struggled, especially that everything was heightened on that, that open practice at the link where he really struggled containing Kenny Gainwell on a couple of passing plays and just looked a little stiff in coverage. But I think 
final the final two weeks of camp, Andrew, he really turned the corner. He was playing with a lot more aggressiveness. He was really good attacking downhill. But I thought that he was at his best even just diagnosing plays, and he was playing a lot more confident and flowing to the football. Didn't seem like he was overthinking anything. And if you had, if you're asking me, by the end of camp, if I had to rank the linebackers, it was evident to me that it was Kobe Dean, Zach Vaughn, and then take your pick between Devin White slash Jeremiah Trotter Jr. I didn't think that those two. I didn't think Devin White made enough plays. The, the at the head of the class at the at, at the top of the linebacker hierarchy. I thought that Kobe Dean really did some good things. So it really wasn't a surprise to me that he's going to be starting. Now I thought that it was going to be Devin White and and the Kobe Dean, not. Uh, Nicobe Dean and Zach Vaughn. You know how much of a geek I've been about uh, Kellen Moore's hiring and how uh, very, very high on it. What Can you tell people just what, are, what do you expect to see tomorrow night in the first game out? Because obviously as the season goes on, there'll be more wrinkles that will be you know exposed on this Eagles offense. What should fans expect to see tomorrow night that's just going to look so different than what we've seen the last few years? You're going to see a lot of motion. I think you're going to see some creativity in how they use Devontae Smith. I think Devontae's going to play as a slot a lot more than he has in his career. And actually, if you're you know a spoiler, because I'm writing about this, but I think Devontae's going to have the best season of any offensive weapon that the Eagles have. I think he's going to be someone that they look to implement. I think you're going to see the running backs involved in the passing game, especially as Jalen Hurts tries to settle into the game. And I think you're also going to see the middle of the field utilized, John, because that's an area that the Eagles have not looked to exploit with Jalen Hurts. I think you're going to, if you're telling more, your your objective is to try and get your quarterback comfortable and into the flow of the game. And in doing so, you're going to want to get the tight end involved over the middle because that's the that's the safety valve. And then I think you're going to want to get the running backs involved in the passing game, which ultimately opens everything up for AJ Monte Smith. All right, Andrew, last question for you. We appreciate your time. We can't wait to hang out with you for the hour tomorrow. Um, but before I ask the question, first, can you just confirm yes or no? Do you have the Eagles winning the NFC East? I do. Okay. I do. I have them winning by a pretty wide margin. Okay. So, with that being said, you have them winning by a wide margin. I do as well. I think they are winning it comfortably where they might not need to play Week 18 unless – they're still fighting for a top seed. So who do you believe will be the teams, you know, come December that will be saying, all right, that's who the Eagles are fighting for the number one overall seed? Because I think people are all over the place with some division winners in the North and the NFC West. All of a sudden, the Rams are getting a lot of love. So who will be the Eagles' fiercest opponents toward the end of the regular season to get that one seed? I believe it will be the 49ers, who obviously they've eliminated in all of their contract you know, the distractions. And I think the Detroit Lions will be another team that could make some uh, could make some headway here towards the, the back stretch of the season. So those are the two teams I'd be keeping an eye on. Do you see this Rams love? I like Matt Stafford a lot, and I think he is underrated in the NFL and always has been. But to, to, for them to win the division, like, I believe it when I see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. And I, 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 too, am a really big Matt Stafford guy. I think that's a team that's kind of going to be a, a sneaky – Contender in the NFC, but I think they're more of a wild card team right now, Andrew. I don't view them as a viable contender to really do anything of significance in the NFC. So tomorrow morning, it's game day, and Andrew DiCecco will be with us. Damn right, man. Look forward to it. Great. Uh, I think it was our best free agent acquisition. Yes. Of the offseason. Saquon Saquon Barkley came second to Andrew DiCecco. Yeah, I mean, I I, (laughs) got to love it. Andrew, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning, man. Likewise, guys. I can't wait. All right, Andrew. We'll talk to you tomorrow morning. There he is, Andrew Zacheck on the Comcast Business Hotline. He'll be joining.